What are the first brands that come to your mind when you think of energy drinks? Well, chances are Monster Energy is one of them. The energy drink has taken the world by storm ever since it was launched. This begs the question, what is its story and how did it become famous? Today, we'll be talking about the untold story of Monster Energy. What is its story and how did it rise to become one of the most popular energy drinks? Well, stick around till the end as we answer these questions and more as we delve into the intricacies surrounding the ultra popular energy drink. Without further ado, let us begin the video. You might be wondering, how did Monster Energy start? To understand, we would have to go way back, all the way back to the year 1935, when Hubert Hansen started his beverage business known as Hansen Fruit and Vegetable Juices. Based in California, they managed to diversify their business and began selling fresh juices to various retailers. These juices included various fruits and vegetables, including oranges, apples, and carrots, amongst other flavors. Hubert and his sons worked tirelessly and managed to set up a huge distribution network that would cover a vast area. As you can imagine, things were going pretty well for the Hansons. Things took a turn for the worst when Hubert passed away, leaving the company to his children. Despite the best efforts of his children, as time passed by, these juices became redundant as people were able to make them on their own. Sales dropped and a solution was needed. Then came the savior, Tim Hansen, who was the grandson of Hubert. In the 1970s, Tim decided to introduce other products, such as sodas and juices of unique flavors. He also decided on marketing the company a bit more to attract more customers and thus renamed the business Hansen Food Incorporated. The juices sold fine, but what amazed everyone was the sale of Hansen sodas, which was introduced by Tim. They were so profitable that Tim opened a new line for them under the name Hansen Sodas. As a result, sales and profits rose and the company continued to flourish. However, since the demand was increasing, they needed a new factory in order to keep up. However, the profit was not that much to support building a new factory. As a result, Hansen Foods declared bankruptcy in 1988. Sad, isn't it? You would think that was the end of Hansen and his company, however, that was just the beginning. Seeing that Hansen was underpriced due to its bankrupt status, on the 27th of July 1992, an investment group acquired Hansen. Under new CEO Rodney Sachs, the investment group hoped that Hansen's name would be useful to generate future sales. Thanks to some investment, the company slowly rose. Sachs took the company public, which helped raise millions of dollars. The revival of a decades-old juice business was underway. Hansen continued to have decent sales. However, their big break came due to an experiment the company was undertaking in 1997. In an attempt to boost sales, Hansen was thinking of diversifying its products. This included introducing a line of energy drinks, known as functionals. Now you can connect the dots. I know you think you understand how this goes on from here, but hear me out. There are more twists and turns in this story than you might think. Coming back to our story, their energy drink lineup was by far the biggest in sales when compared to other beverages they supplied, such as juices and sodas. These energy drinks had similar marketing to the ones we see in energy drinks today, as they claimed to give a person an immediate energy boost whenever he or she needed it the most. Side by side, they claimed it was a natural drink, implying it was not chemically enhanced. The Functionals energy drink became so popular that until 1998, barely a year after it was introduced, accounted for nearly 25% of the overall sales from the company. Seeing how popular their energy drink lineup was becoming, Hansen started to focus on it and began competing with Red Bull Energy Drink and Rockstar Energy for the crown of having the largest market share in this relatively new energy drink market. However, as time passed by, they saw Red Bull rising and their share in the market dropping. Moreover, Rockstar Energy was also making moves, which further decreased Hansen's market share. Thus, dramatic steps were needed in order to rectify this. Now, what do you think would be the differentiating factor between these three companies? Taste? Well, all of these three are decent in taste. Marketing? Oh yes, that was a big factor. Suppose you plan to buy your first energy drink. Which one would you buy? Well, for many, it would be Red Bull, as it has the catchiest name, 
which would imply that drink really gives you energy. That is what Hansen's lacked, a good name. The name Hansen's was too decent for the energy drink market, and that, folks, was the birth of Monster Energy. In 2002, Hansen's rebranded their energy drinks to Monster Energy. This name was really good since it gave the impression that the energy drink was really amazing, and its energy was so powerful that it transformed you into a monster. Moreover, since its branding was done with catchy neon green claws on a black background, its packaging stood out from the rest. This resulted in their market share skyrocketing as more and more people started to shift to this apparently new energy drink. The drink was more or less the same. The major difference was the packaging and the branding. This goes to show how important branding is for a product and can be the difference between a product being successful or being a failure. The Hansons saw how Monster Energy was slowly becoming the face of the company and dominated sales. Thus, plans were underway to change the name of the company to Monster Beverage Corporation. This made sense as the investment group thought that the name of the company should reflect the identity of their best-selling product. Thus, on the 5th of January 2012, the name of the company was officially changed to Monster Beverage Corporation. So now, Monster Energy Drink had everything they needed in order to become a majority shareholder. It had a product and a name that was suitable for the energy drink market. The only thing needed was a perfect marketing strategy that could topple the power Red Bull had in the industry. Hence, Monster Beverage Company started to portray its energy drinks to be suited for risk-takers and high-energy individuals. Previously, they were going the safe way and portraying it as a natural energy drink. While this change in marketing strategy will open doors of criticism as people will say that Monster is targeting the party culture of the world and is taking advantage of it while neglecting the health concerns it might cause to these individuals. However, Monster won't mind as due to this change in strategy, their sales have boosted a lot and have managed to counter Red Bull's dominance. That was not all. Monster also targeted the athletes and signed many of them on endorsement deals. This gave the energy drink that professional outlook, like Red Bull had with their wide array of athletes. In the end, it was kind of like Adidas and Nike who signed the best star for their product. Like Red Bull, Monster has opted to endorse athletes that were affiliated with extreme sports. This included the UFC, different kinds of racing events, and other adrenaline-based sports. Besides these, Monster also endorses a number of music artists as they continue to spread their band through the cool looks these music artists portray. These artists include Iggy Azalea, 21 Savage, Machine Gun Kelly, and bands such as Suicidal Tendencies and Five Finger Death Punch, among others. These all were selected due to their energetic styles of singing, such as rock and punk rock, which again goes hand in hand with the image they are trying to portray with their energy drink. In the end, I would just say that Monster Beverage Corporation has done a splendid job with its brand marketing. As of now, they have a 23.2% market share in the energy drink industry, and statistics show that is still rising. Thanks to the efforts of CEO Rodney Sachs, the once bankrupt company is now valued at an astounding $5.4 billion. The sky is the limit, people and undoubtedly Monster will be looking to expand even further. I hope that clarifies everything regarding the story behind Monster Energy. I think we have discussed everything. However, if you have any questions, do let us know in the comments down below. We value the queries and opinions of our esteemed subscribers, so do not hesitate to do so. That's it for the video. I hope you liked and enjoyed the video. Please let me know by pressing the like button, and if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for future notifications. Till then, take care of yourself, and I'll see you guys in the next one.